My name is Thomas Minard. Today I am here again with Jim Zatel, and he is going to be giving us an introduction to photo editing using Snapseed. And here he is. Hello everybody, artist Jim here. Thanks Thomas, it's good to be back. Welcome back to Newport. It's a beautiful day. We're out here in our sun porch and just enjoying the weather. Doing some editing here and uh, one of the basic editing tools I have found to be uh, very, very effective in terms of turning an average looking photo into something that's really special. Uh, what I wanted to do today is give you an introduction to the basic uh, format of Snapseed, basically how you get into it the tools that are available to you and how you actually will go about uh, working with it, uh, going through a number of steps. And as you get <clears throat> as you get more acquainted with the um, introduction, introductory type of tools, then later on what we'll do is we'll get more into the sophisticated types of uh, editing that you can do with Snapseed. All right, so what we want to do, the first thing that you want to do, of course, is go to Applications, go to uh, Hunt Down Snapseed, and uh, that'll bring you to, of course, I have it already open, so um, you download it. Now, it doesn't cost anything. And there's, and there's no ads. Uh, it's a free application that millions of people use. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And what we're going to do is over the next two or three minutes, simply look at an example of some of these tools that you'll be working with. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to bring my picture in that I want to work on. This is a portrait of a woman and this was shot down in Newport, and it was it was it was indoors, and they used they used the flash, and um, so everything's kind of blown out. So in this day and age, that's the other reason why I wanted to use a portrait because so many of us enjoy taking pictures of people, selfies, all that type of stuff. So I'm going to run through three or four real easy tricks that you can use to enhance a portrait. And those same tools you'll be able to apply at a later date in different other kinds of photographs. So the first thing you wanna do, you can look down below and there's a whole lineup of pictures. And some people will just pick one and they'll, they'll hit it to get some sort of adjustment. I don't like to do it that way because no matter what I pick, it isn't exactly the way I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the tools. Now what you see when I open up the tools, there's like, what, 25 or so tools that you can use. And for this one, what I wanna work on, when I look at that picture, I analyze the picture. Her face is blown out. Uh, this, I don't like the white that goes around her because it doesn't enclose her. The color is really bad. And uh, uh, the portrait is crooked. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tools. And I'm going to go to the rotate tool. So you hit that. And this is real easy. You hit rotate. It can go around 90 degrees. Or you can make a simple adjustment like this. Now, I like to, when I adjust, I like to line these up in such a way that um, you're getting uh, focus points matching the eyes in a portrait. Um, so there you go, it's straightened out. The next step I would like to do is I'd like to tune it. So there is a tuning tool uh, 
And that tool has uh, seven or eight different uh, capabilities. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, and warmth, and you can read them all there. Now, a lot of people get messed up and they go, where is it? Because when you take your hand away, it disappears. But all you have to do is set it where you want it, and then this is going to be brightness, and the way you adjust it is down and up. Like so. Now, I encourage everybody to use the entire, uh, just go fully down and fully up, and then pick something in between, or however you want it. And I'd like to bring this down a bit more, say about in there, because I'd like to get her skin tone so it's, it, so it's not so blown out. I mean, it looks like, you could really tell that it was taken with a flash. <laughs> Now, the next thing you have is contrast. Now, that, that really deepens certain sections of the portrait, but at the same time, it disfigures so many different areas on the face. Uh, and so I like to bring that down, the contrast. And I, in this case, I think I'd like to... Bring it down. Now, if you look up here, the contrast is plus 15. It's like a percentage. It's an arbitrary number. But um, I usually don't go more than 25 either way. Then the next thing we can do is saturation. Move it all the way down. Now you have a black and white because the saturation's down to zero, or you can bring it all the way up. And then when you bring it all the way up, that that's not exactly what I would be looking for. So I'll bring it down to the point where I'm primarily looking here and I'm looking here to see how much color I can get without distorting the picture. And I think that's about right. Then you go to ambience. Ambience can help you with better definition of, uh, of the highlights. So... I sort of like, like it here, I think, like that, um, because now it's beginning to accentuate her features, and it's starting to create structure within her face, and also uh, the uh, material that she's wearing. Then the next one you go to is shadows you go the whole way up and you go the whole way down and this really isn't having much of an effect because of the adjustments that we've made already and then you go to warmth and warmth is you know people use it to enhance or adjust skin tone now if you go all the way down somebody might say well you know that's kind of cool but if you go all the way down then what you do is you're eliminating any warmth and you're going into the territory of the blues. And if you come all the way up, then that's really strong warmth. And um, I think in my book, it's too much for her. And I'm going to bring that down. Now, that you know, what's happening here is when I push down like so, we're seeing the photo more or less how it was when we started out. Um, and that's a good way to see where you've come from and where you're going. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to check that. Now, when you check that, you basically have accepted all those changes you made. Now, if you want to, you can go back up here and you can review edits and what you can do is you can you see where I rotated here and then you can see where I tuned it. I say I didn't like some of the tuning. I can go back to it and I can make adjustments. So if I wanted that brighter, you know, it's just sort of like a second chance to come back and see how how you're doing with it and um making final adjustments. Now, since that's a portrait, there's some good tools here to use for portrait 
uh, editing. Uh, first, there's one called Head, head Pose. I'm going to hit that and show you what it does. Now, Head Pose, actually, you can, with Head Pose, you can change a bit the direction that she's looking. So I don't know if you can see that. And here, it's kind of freaky. But anyhow, I like her staring at me. I think that's perfect. Um, then the next one, another great tool is, is, uh, uh, is the portrait tool. Now I like it because I'm old and with that portrait tool, you can do a lot of things to make a 70 year old guy look a few years younger. So I'm gonna hit portrait and what you'll see is uh, I can smooth the skin, I can enhance the eyes, uh, I can do both. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do it myself. I'm gonna do, now if you want a face spotlight, you're adding lightness to the face, but now you're undoing the structure that we had done. So I'm not gonna do that. You can smooth the skin out. That's very pretty. I like that. And you can improve the eye quality. She's got that little, little glint in her eyes, which I like a lot. Now the last thing I like to do with portraits is I like to create uh, a vignette. So uh, with a vignette, you can, here's the center point for the vignette, and you can make that bigger to make it smaller. And down here, you make the adjustment. You can outer brightness, like so. And I think that's pretty good. So vignettes, I think, are really helpful with a portrait because it just makes the face stand out. And then the inner brightness, as you can see, like so. I like that a lot. Maybe a little bit more light. Maybe a little bit light. So with seven or eight tools, what we've done is we've changed that to this, that to this. If you want to see everything you did, you go to view edits and everything you did is here on this margin. So that's basically how to edit. That's editing with, um, for a portrait. We've used about five or six tools. As you can see, there's, there's plenty more. The, uh, some of those other tools they have, you will use more for more sophisticated types of editing uh, changing, uh, texture, uh, creating a grunge look, uh, uh, also to create a glow, uh, there's gram uh, glamour grow, there's all kinds of things that we haven't touched upon, and <clears throat> we're gonna, we'll have another session where we get into more sophisticated types of, uh, of material. Thanks for joining us. Uh, that's just a fraction of what Snapseed can do. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about. There's more tutorials that are on YouTube. Uh, you can look at those. You can uh, also start trying it out uh, and go at your own speed. Uh, by the time we talk again, which is more advanced type of, of uh, utilization of the tools, you might very well be able to teach me. And that, that, uh, that's fine. So uh, use it, play with it, uh, and get to know it. Uh, and we will see you again soon. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that particular picture will be, uh, will be clipped on to the uh, video so you'll be able to practice with that as well. So, have a good day. Thank you.
thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed. If you want to check out our other videos, you can check out our other videos, such as the sunset at Satchewis Beach and the other one we did at the Mount Hope Bridge. Those are two great videos you can use for meditation or other types of relaxation. You can check out some of our informational videos, such as the Marble House in Newport, Rhode Island, Daffodil Days at the Blythewald Mansion, and our video that may or may not be posted at the time of this video at the Portsmouth Historical Society in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. So, you got a wide range of videos from us to check out. Check them out if you want, and we'll see you next time.